Hello everyone and welcome back to round three of our F1 manager career mode. Yesterday we're back finally. I apologise, it's been a while since we jumped in to the McLaren Road to Glory. But we return today here for the Australian Grand Prix. Of course, Oscar Piastri's home race and finally... Hopefully we're going to have some facility and development and design upgrades sorted this weekend. Of course, it's been a little while uh, since the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix that went live last week. So if you missed like, that video, go back, check it out. Of course, I'm going to try and get more consistency uh, now in this series. So we're going to be trying to aim for two, maybe three uploads a week. So of course, if you do go on to enjoy... Please do make sure you leave a like, get yourself subscribed as well for daily Formula 1 related content. Of course, my team still always takes priority. And at the time of recording this, though, we are incredibly close to 94,000 subscribers. So if you haven't clicked that big red button down below, please make sure you do so for daily Formula 1 related content. But yeah, like I said, though, we have got the design completion on the suspension upgrade. Uh, we've then got a couple of facility upgrades as well as we head into this weekend. So fingers crossed there we go go so that design is now completed so we've got to make sure that we now build a couple of those upgrades as well their car developments let's go on to a well we need to develop a couple of these there so you can see we've got one of the version two um but we desperately need two of the version three so that's gonna take uh, a little while can i try and hurry it up four days we desperately want them on the cars ready for this weekend. But as long as we can get one of them, then we can put one driver on the suspension version 2 and then one on the version 3 there. You can see the Australian Grand Prix isn't for nine more days. So yeah, we should be able to get both of those all ready to go. Then you can see an upgrade on the team hub as well. So we're finally sort of making some progress, taking steps forward as we head towards Albert Park this weekend. Of course, the first few races have been a little bit sort of slow getting into it there. As you can see, race simulator upgrade fixed up as well. But, you know, it is all about trying to build momentum. And you can see after the Australian Grand Prix as well, we have got some new regulations proposed as well. Uh, so we're going to be voting on those ready for the next episode. As there we go, the manufacturing on the suspension is now complete. So we will head over to the suspension and we will change both cars onto the version 3 there so that's going to give us a bit of performance as we head into this weekend we do need to be trying to build up more upgrades though ready for the cars as well so car developments will try and design we've already got a new front wing in the works we've just done suspension i feel like underfloor might be the way to go here so we haven't got many hours left there so we're just going to finish uh, using everything that we've got of course we will get a reset on the a atr period there yes yeah, so in just a couple of races time so we may as well just use up everything that we've got at the moment as well there so yeah let's let's focus on trying to make sure everything's pretty neutral you can see we'll get a lot more drag reduction uh and then you know a little bit more downforce as well around the car but uh we'll give it we'll give it a couple of engineers there as well so he's going to take quite a while though 58 days have we got well, yeah we may as well use as many engineers as we possibly can there another million quid though down the drain so we are well not quite down the drain but you know what i mean uh we're spending a lot of money early on this season there to really try and bring mclaren forward but let's get into it though australian grand prix time fingers crossed you know we, we've you know we've been ahead of aston martin and williams but we want to try and get closer to Haas and alpine and the alpha towers of this world welcome to melbourne for a weekend of fierce competition we're a stone's throw from the beach here at the Albert Park Circuit. It might be party mood in the grandstands, but in the paddock, expectations and tensions are high. The Albert Park Circuit is bursting with rapid corners and a long straight where drivers can push their speed to the limits. Good attention to medium speed downforce will likely make beating this beast of a track just a little bit easier. We might still be early in the season, but that doesn't mean we can sit back and relax. Everything is up for grabs, and nothing is certain at this stage. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Formula One. Well, 
Well, here we are then, back at Albert Park, and the rain has arrived. This weekend, it's meant to rain pretty much throughout, so maybe this will give us a little bit of a helping hand. F122, the last time it rained there, we did pretty well, but whether the story is going to be the same here on the uh, F1 Manager game is a very, very different story. We didn't have much luck uh, in some of the wet races in our Ferrari career mode, but yeah, downforce, I think, is going to be quite key then on the car this weekend so as always we'll make a few tweaks we'll see what we can try and sort of change around there and fingers crossed you know we'll try some different things out on both cars and we'll see what we can do right well both cars heading out then onto the circuit instantly here in fp1 what we want to see you know mclaren we, we haven't started off the year well still yet to score our first points but we're trying to make progress and that's the most important thing there uh in terms of weather though Actually meant to uh, only a 40% chance of rain throughout the session, so fingers crossed it's just going to stay throughout there. We just want to try and get good, reliable data uh, for both drivers here. And fingers crossed, you know, we can still try and make some more progress towards finding a setup that works. Oh, there we go. Instantly, Oscar Piastri not happy with the car setup, so we'll instantly bring him back in. Uh, like I said, we've, we've tried some very, very different strategies with both drivers at the moment. As Lando Norris now heading back to the garage as well. Um, what can we learn for Oscar then? Everything's within the parameters. He just doesn't like most of what we've got, which is always reassuring. Not not really. I don't know. We'll, we'll tweak some things and we'll, we'll see what we can sort of alter. And Lando wasn't much happier with the car then as well. So although we might have made some quite aggressive tweaks to the car, it yeah, clearly wasn't working the way any of us had in mind. I think uh, Australia, of course, Albert Park, you do need quite a high-speed setup nowadays. As I'm just trying to work out how we can get everything where we really want it. The traction's nowhere near where it's required. Can we just alter the toe angles? We just can't get the car anywhere near where we need it. That's a bit better. We'll, we'll, we'll try that with Lando and see if that does him any favours. All being said though, 20 minutes left of free practice one here from Albert Park. I'm still not convinced either driver is particularly ecstatic with the setup. Looks like we have taken a step forward though uh, with the upgrades there. You know, Kevin Magnussen barely quicker than us at the moment. You know, we're right there with, you know, your Bottas's, your Ocons and your Pierre Gasly's of this career mode and they really are sort of the top of the midfield where we should be. Hey, there we go. That's what I want to see. Oscar Piastri happy now uh, with the car setup. So we'll, we'll make a few final tweaks then. And if Lando's still not happy, then we'll pretty much bring him over onto Oscar's setup and see if that works. Lando Norris definitely still seems to have a little bit of extra pace than Oscar. But that's finally a good sign. It feels now like we're making some progress. Lando Norris as well, loving the car. So... Well, not quite loving. Loving it strong, but happy with the car now. We just made a couple of minor tweaks on Oscar's side of things, just to try and get the balance right where we want it. But reassuring signs to kick off the weekend here from Mel. I almost said Adelaide then. That that was even before I was born. But yeah, reassuring, I think. I hope. Well, there we go then, the end of free practice here from Australia, and it is Carlos Sainz fastest there, just half a tenth up on his teammate Charles Leclerc. Max Verstappen, Sergio Perez then not too far away either, but yeah, decent laps, decent numbers from our two drivers there, getting closer and closer to where we want to be. We could try and sneak away a Q3 appearance here in Australia, but as long as we both get both cars once again into Q2 there, we want to be trying to fight for points on Sunday. Let's get into it though, qualifying here from Melbourne. We return to our highly anticipated race weekend, just in time for the start of qualifying. There are no more chances to practice this weekend. It gets serious from now on in, as our teams prepare to record their best lap times ahead of tomorrow's race. One good lap isn't enough to guarantee a strong position, with consistency absolutely essential for those looking to succeed. Let the competition commence. Radio check. Here we are then, ready for qualifying from the Australian Grand Prix. We haven't got many fresh sets of tyres here 
early on in the session. But yeah, car setup, yeah, you can see Oscar Piastri very, very happy with the car. So we'll keep him, well, may as well leave him with what he's doing there. Lando Norris as well. Uh, you can see there again, very, very happy with the car. So we have made some good progress. You know, we're learning slowly but surely still. We are learning on F1 Manager, but don't really want to go out too early in Q1. I feel like Q2 now is not, not a guarantee necessarily, but we should be there unless... Again, we, we shouldn't see any rain, at least during Q1. Of course, Oscar Piastri's first ever home Grand Prix, and of course, the return of Australian Grand Prix as well, after a few years of hiatus, of course, during the coronavirus. Fingers crossed Oscar can put a good first time on the board there. Lando Norris has just come out onto the circuit as well. I'm hoping, I'm hoping they're going to be fairly, you know, sort of around Pierre Gasly's time. Well, Yuki Sonoda then has slotted in about six tenths away behind his teammate there. As Oscar Piastri, so far the laps felt pretty tidy watching it from our young Australian. We'll sit just on top of his head there as he heads through the final couple of turns of this Albert Park circuit. Round in the final corner, Lando Norris of course now has just started his run as well. And let's just wait and see them. Oscar Piastri up towards the line. It is going to be a 1 minute 20 point, about 8 if I'm not mistaken there. And that puts him, again, right between those Alpha Towers. Not bad going. For a first lap there. Fingers crossed. Yeah, we can keep Sonoda out. As it looks like Norris is getting held up. Uh, behind, of course, it's Nicholas Latifi. Y you love to see it, don't you? It's safe to assume that Lando Norris's lap was pretty much ruined before it even begun here. Is that at the final corner? He's got one of the Red Bulls alongside him. It's a 121 for Lando Norris. He goes slower than Alex Albon. Thank you very much, Latifi. Right, well, everyone is heading back out then onto the circuit right towards the end of Q1 here. In fact, all 20 cars are back on the road there. Lando Norris currently sat in the drop zone. Oscar Piastri up in P12. But there is still the potential for a few cars to go quicker than him late on here. So I've just set both cars out to go for one last ditch run then here in Q1 for the Australian Grand Prix. As Lando Norris then runs through the final corner. We'll try and monitor Oscar Piastri's times as well down on the MFD. And fingers crossed both drivers get a little bit of clear space ahead of them there. Of course, everyone's so, so bunched up. Everyone desperate to get back out on a run there. You can see both Haas cars are going to be cutting it incredibly tight down at the rear of the field. They're less than 10 seconds for both of their cars to get on the run. As I want to say, it's Fernando Alonso that is leading the train there. So he could be quite strategic and potentially slow down and ruin every single other car's laps. You know, maybe Alonso of real life might be a bit cheeky and considerate, but Fernando Alonso inside F1 manager is maybe maybe less of a creative soul, I think we'll describe it there. As Lando Norris Green in Sector 1, Oscar Piastri not able to improve on his previous lap there, but still quicker than uh, Lando Norris on the first sector. They have got slightly different setups as Oscar Piastri again is not improving there. Fernando Alonso does improve though up into P6 as George Russell a little bit out of position there as well. Sergio Perez hangs on to P3 quicker than his teammate Max Verstappen as we've got yellow flags out. I think Oscar Piastri has been it. Oscar Piastri off in the gravel trap and that has ruined his qualifying lap. I think he's going to ruin Lando Norris as well as we head through the final couple of turns there. Please just get out of the way for Lando Norris behind. And is this now going to screw Lando Norris as he heads through the final couple of corners here? Not many other cars are improving at the moment there. Charles Leclerc stays fastest ahead of Carlos Sainz. Max Verstappen and up towards the line Lando Norris. He goes P15. Will we see Mick Schumacher behind him improve? That's going to be the real question there. He's probably the only one that can knock Lando Norris out. And Mick Schumacher stays in P16 there. So we just about clutch up. Both cars make it into Q2. But that was scarier than it needed to be. Oscar Piastri there with a bit of a moment at his home race. And having a look then at those final Q1 results. Lando Norris does make it through by three tenths over Mick Schumacher. So it is our usual five there out in Q1. But yeah, George Russell seemingly struggling a bit to match the pace of Lewis Hamilton there. But Piastri quicker than Lando Norris. But Lando never really got a good run in in Q1. Here we go. Q2, we've got to get on with it. There's a very, very big chance of rain later on in the session there. So we've just got to try and get both cars out onto the circuit as early as possible here. The rain is predicted in five minutes. Less than five minutes. 
Have we got a chance to try and sneak our way into Q3? As it looks like not many other cars are heading out onto the circuit there. Shall I thought I saw Ferrari coming out, but it might have been Bottas. Yes, it is. So Bottas seems to be the only other driver that is aware of the potential permutations. You can already see the circuit getting overcast. Well, maybe we've sent out our two cars a little bit close to each other as we get ready to start the lap. But Lando Norris hopefully can try and drag Oscar Piastri around this circuit in less than four minutes then until the rain. And still, not many cars are heading out onto the circuit. I want it now really in about a minute to start absolutely bucketing it down here as we'll stay with Lando with Oscar Piastri right behind him through this lap there. Valtteri Bottas seems to be the only other car on a lap there. I think uh, yeah, Carlos Sainz has come out onto the circuit as well. There is now Zhou Guan Yu maybe just starting to understand the gravity of the situation as well. It'll be an interesting way to get both cars into Q3 for the first time this year but you know what? I would absolutely take it there. Of course we haven't actually got any fresh sets of tyres either ready for Q3, uh, ready in, Q in Q2, sorry. So if we can somehow nail this, that would be absolutely perfect there, as Sainz does just about get out of the way for his former team's drivers there. Of course, Carlos Sainz, a McLaren driver, up until the end of 2020. But Lando Norris so far felt, looked like a fairly tidy lap there. Oscar Piastri and Lando Norris, they're pretty even by the looks of it on the timings. Lando quicker in Sector 1, actually a lot quicker in Sector 2 there, so Oscar Piastri did get held up ever so slightly, but I think Valtteri Bottas setting the timing sheets alive a bit further back, as through the final couple of corners then comes Lando. Oscar Piastri definitely struggling through the final couple of corners, so we need this rain to arrive now, and really, really heavily, if possible there, as through the final corner we go, Lando Norris up towards the line, will it be about a 1 minute 20, or 120.9, I think was the time on the board there, Land, uh, Oscar Piastri second away in the end so not reassuring from our second driver there but yeah Lando Norris now starting to deliver and now let the heavens open as, oh there we go as both cars head into the pit lane heavy rain is predicted you can see now plenty of other drivers including Max Verstappen heading out onto the circuit it's still quicker to be on the drives up until one mil of water but surely that's going to change very, very quickly. You can just see everyone at the moment trying to get laps in. No one knows what's going on there. Charles Leclerc has gone fastest on his set of soft compound tyres. But Hamilton is trying to brave it out at the moment on a set of intermediates. The circuit isn't getting absolutely drenched. But surely, I mean, they're not going to be able to go quicker than us. They're racing in the rain. So really, we've got, what, nine cars or so trying to battle to see if they can pick up the final four slots here in Q2. The rain isn't meant to get any heavier, but it is meant to stick around right until the end of the session. Lewis Hamilton comes up over the line. He's going to go P7 there. Max Verstappen does go marginally quicker, but they're 10 seconds off the pace. We might have just nailed this. And look at this then. With less than a minute on the clock, Yuki Tsunoda currently down in P15. 22 seconds off the pace. He's bolted on a set of intermediates, but we're through into Q3 for the first time in the McLaren Road to Glory in what has probably been my best qualifying session on F1 Manager for pure excitement as much as anything else. And there we go then, qualifying two done and dusted here from Australia. Max Verstappen out in Q2, Lewis Hamilton out in Q2 there as well as Esteban Ocon. We were third and sixth there. Both McLarens make it through. Both Alfa Romeos make it through. Kevin Magnussen as well as Fernando Alonso. It's absolutely what you love to see here in qualifying for the Australian Grand Prix. Now I've got to hope the changeable conditions come again and we can try and capitalise. Well, Oscar Piastri then his first ever Q3 appearance in Formula 1 and it has come at his home Grand Prix. They're round in the final few corners about to start his first lap. We've only got the one fresh set of soft compound tyres for both drivers. It is just going to be dry now until the end of qualifying. There's meant to be no rain on the horizon as he's got Valtteri Bottas all over his trumpet. Fingers crossed he can keep the uh, flying fin at bay and he can try and pick up a good qualifying lap. I might have accidentally fast-forwarded there a bit too far. Oscar Piastri, fifth place there at the end of his run. Lando Norris, sadly, down in seventh. But, but quicker than Bottas, mainly because Oscar held him up throughout the entire lap. We've got one run on a fresh compound of tyres. Let's make it count. Right, well, as it is Oscar Piastri's home Grand Prix, we may as well ride on board with him then 
for his final run here in Q3. Both drivers now got a fresh set of the soft compound tyres bolted onto the car. Track is getting warmer and warmer as well, so fingers crossed this can be a good lap from our little Australian pocket rocket there. Over the start-finish line then to start a lap here from Albert Park, breaking at about the 100 metre board into Turn 1 there. Fifth gear on the way in, trying to attack the kerbs on the exit of the first turn there, allowing the car to run wide over the kerbing on the exit as you now try and set yourself up for the run in towards turn three there. Back over on the left-hand side there again, trying to tip the car in, of course. Australia seeing quite a lot of renovations here, means that the circuit does maintain a bit higher speed throughout a lot of the corners there, and nowhere is that more noticeable than the start of Q2, uh, uh, sector two even, sorry, I should say. Oscar Piastri there, green, through the first sector as he now heads out through what is basically an entirely flat-out section of the Albert Park circuit there. You've got one braking zone, one quick flick through that right-hander, and then it is flat all the way down until you get to the turn 9 and 10 flat-out chicane there. Braking just as you reach the gantry. Again, Oscar Piastri green through sector 2 here. Could he still match the likes of Joe Guan Yu and Fernando Alonso there? About half a second up at the moment. Alonso currently stays in at P5 there. As we head down in towards the final couple of turns, uh, Carlos Sainz fastest ahead of Charles Leclerc. Sergio Perez in at P3, still ahead of George Russell. Valtteri Bottas improves up to 7th place there. Kevin Magnussen improves up to ninth place. It is going to come down to it for our two cars then. Can we get ahead of the Alfa Romeos here at Albert Park? Oscar Piastri across the line and he stays in P8 there. Just a few hundreds away from both of their cars. Will Lando Norris be able to go quicker than his teammate Lando Norris? I think that was a seven. He goes P6. That's what we want to see there. We are now definitely in the fight for points this weekend. We have got a good midfield car and Lando Norris once more delivers right at the end of Q3. It's been a bit of a problematic qualifying session for the young Brit up to then, but we are 6th and ninth on the grid, ready for the Australian Grand Prix. Carlos Sainz will start this one from pole. Charles Leclerc P2 makes it a Ferrari front row lockout. We're going to have Max Verstappen, Lewis Hamilton trying to carve their way through the field, but maybe today we can get our first points of the year. Tension continues to build here as race day begins. Qualifying went well for McLaren and they're set to start this race feeling quite comfortable. Aston Martin were on target for qualifying. Now it's up to them to defy expectations for the race itself. And the sky is looking grey and cloudy today. An effective tyre strategy could prove very valuable as the race plays out. In any case, Melbourne is ready and so are we. So strap yourselves in for the Australian Grand Prix. Right, well, here we are then, Albert Park, and are we going to see some rain here throughout the Grand Prix? That could really spice things up. It could help us, it could hinder us. No one really knows just yet, but in terms then of strategy... Ooh, so we are going to see rain towards the end of the Grand Prix. We're going to go brave. We're going to put both drivers on a set of hard compound tyres and hope they can stretch them to the wet period there. That's going to be the key today. Uh, Oscar Piastri hasn't been particularly perfect on his tyre wear up to this point so far this season, but Lando Norris has certainly, uh, you know, on his occasion, has been a bit of a tyre whisperer as well. It's a bold call here at Albert Park, but we need to make bold calls today if we want to try and get this car some big points that it finally deserves. It's a bit of a cloudy day for the race, but the atmosphere, as ever, is electric. And there's Lando Norris. They might not be in the top three spots, but things could change fast once the race gets underway. And it's the other McLaren. They're in the front half of the pack, so there's plenty of potential for them. Everything's been building to this. Brace yourselves for the Australian Grand Prix. And it's lights out, and away we go. Well, there we go then. Green flag racing here from Albert Park. And we need to just try and make sure, first and foremost, that both our cars make it through Turn 1 there. Looks like Lando Norris has got a good start trying to keep Valtteri Bottas and Joe Guan Yu at bay. Oscar Piastri 
might just get swamped out by Kevin Magnussen. No, it looks like he's fought back against the Haas car there. It's, look at Fernando Alonso trying to go at it with the big boys at the front of the field there. Fernando Alonso will take any opportunity he's given. And there we go. Fernando trying to keep the nose up the inside of George Russell through the first couple of corners there. Lando Norris hangs on to P6 ahead of Zhou Guan Yu there, who's still side by side with his teammate Valtteri Bottas. Remember, Zhou Guan Yu is in just his third ever Formula 1 Grand Prix. And he's going to try and elbow Bottas out as we head out thing towards the middle sector there. Still side by side between the two Alfa Romeos there. Of course, Fred Vasseur confirmed this morning that he will be leaving Alfa Romeo at the end of 2022. And that has caused a huge domino of effects around at the F1 Palette. There's so many team principal transfers. It is like F1 manager, but you can just see as we head down in towards the final few corners of this opening lap. I wonder whether it's worth just trying to get Lando just to try and use some of his battery break away from these battling Alfa Romeos there it might be critical early on in this Grand Prix to break out the DRS we know how quick those Alfa Romeos are over the course of a race as you can just see there or Zhou Guan Yu thought by trying to have a look up the inside of Lando Norris in towards the final couple of corners Oscar Piastri though has hung on quite nicely behind and it looks like most cars have opted for a set of medium compound tyres here at the start of the Grand Prix so that's quite interesting then so we're probably going to see everyone else pit before the rain arrives there they might bolt on a set of soft compound tyres or just go with the double hards but we've got to try and push on get Lando Norris to break away from those two Alfa Romeos behind it looks like Bottas though has now cemented himself into P7 here as Oscar Piastri just waits in the wings behind them and tries to keep Kevin Magnussen at bay as ran him through the final couple of turns then as we start that three of the GP DRS is now enabled and sadly Lando Norris is not within the range of uh, Fernando Alonso just in front of him. Oscar Piastri though as well is still under a lot of pressure from Kevin Magnussen but today is about trying to pick and choose our battles here. Speaking of which Max Verstappen already now trying to line up a move on K-Mag as we head down in towards turn three. No of course these two probably two of the most aggressive drivers in the world of Formula One and I'm sure we'll not see Kevin Magnussen give an inch unless he absolutely has to of course came together at the Singapore Grand Prix in real life 2022 and yeah I always love Kevin Magnussen the fact that he will have a fight with absolutely anyone no matter what position it's for Kevin Magnussen will fight it like it's the last thing on earth that matters to him there as you can just see Oscar Piastri might just get him on the overtake slightly see if he can try and break away from K-Mag at the moment there as you can just see uh, Max Verstappen there still applying pressure to Kevin Lewis Hamilton further back as well of course going to watch out for him over the course of today as you can see here comes the Dutchman once again their DRS now unable but of course so has Kevin Magnussen got that DRS there to the outside goes Verstappen in towards the final couple of corners but thinks better of it for now as yeah Lando under increasing pressure from Bottas not maybe convinced this is worth the battle early on here Alfa Romeo will probably got the strongest car in the midfield early on this season so if Bottas is going to get the run which it looks like he might do now out of the final corner here comes Bottas and he's just going to sit back for now we have still got to pick and choose our battles remember we are trying to play quite a long strategy as well today so if we damage the tyres if we wear too much out of them early on here that can be as puts in a world of hurt as well is yeah, I reckon we're only going to see rain at a sort towards lap 40 there. As here comes Bottas up the inside of Lando Norris, and we will lose the spot. But you know what? I'm not going to worry about. I'm not too worried about that at the moment, as we're both losing places at the moment. There it looks like Kevin Magnussen has made the move on Oscar Piastri as well. We'll watch that one back quickly then. See how he managed that one. Must have just been Randy outside through turn two there. Fair play, Kevin Magnussen can try and make moves where you wouldn't quite expect it. Is almost. Max Verstappen tried to follow him through there, but thinks better of it. And will sit behind our Australian driver early on in this Grand Prix. Surely it won't be long, though, before Max Verstappen is making the move. Here we go. Max Verstappen then looks to the outside of Oscar Piastri. Lynn switches back to the inside in towards the final few corners. Not again, though, able to do it. As Oscar hanging on nicely to the DRS. And hopefully Lando can do the same. That could be quite nice for us. Of course, this is being recorded after the most recent patch but DRS is still quite effective as oh there we go Max Verstappen has now pulled off the move on Oscar Piastri through the final couple of corners Oscar not happy with it but more worryingly as well Lando Norris struggling to keep in touch with a Bottas at the road there as Max Verstappen is going to try and make two moves let's just see quickly what he did to Oscar Piastri they're around the outside in towards the final few corners so much more grip though we are going to lose places early on 
starting on these hard compound tyres, but we've got to hope the race comes back to us, as I think now Verstappen, he will have pulled off the, pulled off the move on Kevin Magnussen, and up into P9 goes the Dutchman. As oh, here we go, Lando Norris now under pressure from Zhou Guan Yu as we head out of the first couple of turns, and Max Verstappen now might try and make it another double overtake there, as Lando Norris going to lose two places in at two corners here but again we've just got to try and settle in we have still got both cars in the points there as Kevin Magnussen seems to be struggling there's moves going on absolutely everywhere early on in this Grand Prix but Lando Norris will slot down into P9 here we've just got to hope that he can stick with these guys I want to try and tell him not to try and fight the cars in front sadly it doesn't look like we can um, but we will tell Piastri to try and hold the cars up behind but we don't really want him to lose too much either. It's it's difficult games early on here, but we have still got both cars inside the points. However, Hamilton is slowly bearing down on both of our cars. I think, yeah, early on in this Grand Prix, we've just got to be sensible with these cars around us. There, Kevin Magnussen has moved back past Oscar Piastri, but yeah, we've definitely made a step forward though, and that is the most important thing. I just want to try and work out a way we can break ahead of those Alpha Towers and maybe try to use these other faster cars to our advantage. Um, but Tyware, of course, is going to start changing things fairly soon. We've just got to pray that rain does arrive when it's predicted and that we can switch straight over onto the intermediates and maybe move ourselves quite far up the order. You know, if you lose 15, 20 seconds from a pit stop, we could be right back towards the front. Ready then at one quarter distance in this Grand Prix and Zhou Guan Yu is holding up an almighty train of cars there, but Hamilton is still not able to get himself around those Alpha Towers. Shades of Imola 2022 from real life there, and he spent most of the afternoon stuck, I think it was, behind you, uh, must have been Pierre Gasly, I think, if I remember off the top of my head there. But Lando Norris, Zhou Guan Yu would just keep swapping places for now, but we've got both cars right where we need them. And, let's not forget, we are on harder tyres. Oh, Fernando Alonso, first car into the pit lane then, so that hasn't taken long. La uh, Fernando, they're going on to a set of the hard compound tyres. Oh, someone else has locked up somewhere around the track. Oh, it's Valtteri Bottas off the circuit. Charles Leclerc's gone as well. And we've, have we got a safety car? We've got multiple cars stopped. What on earth has happened to Charles Leclerc? Is he out of the Grand Prix there? Bottas has locked up and hit the Ferrari. And Charles Leclerc has been absolutely taken out of the Grand Prix there. We have not had that very often. I want to see that one again just quickly. As Bottas as well, they're absolutely to blame for that one. Leclerc, nothing he could do. Bottas just tried to stop the car. They got on the grass, tried to avoid him. But we've seen some nasty, nasty crashes down at Turn 3 before. Luckily, this one a bit less dramatic. But that has massively helped out us. Because we've now got both cars inside the top seven. And luckily, somehow... There's no safety car either. There we go, Lewis Hamilton diving into the pit lane then at the end of lap 20. So yeah, a lot of cars not going too aggressive there. And it looks like everyone is now on a hard set of the tyres. There's Lando Norris, Oscar Piastri just trying to make sure we keep Pierre Gasly at bay. But both cars now inside the top six. This race could really come towards our direction later on. I'm, I'm getting hyped here. Oh, here we go, lap 23. George Russell, Max Verstappen into the pit lane there. We're not quite going to be right at the front of the field. But we are going to now have a car into fourth place here in Albert Park. And yeah, Oscar Piastri as well, of course, still just sat right behind him in P5. But we've still got at least another 10, maybe 15 laps before the rain arrives. We've really got to hope that rain does arrive. Um, but, I mean, we've got a fair old gap to the cars behind us there. Fernando Alonso... Two seconds back. George Russell, four seconds back. But yeah, Fernando Alonso is absolutely having the race of his life right now. As pretty much everyone now onto a set of the hards. Oh no! Oscar Piastri. I just saw Piastri run wide there out of turn one. I think he's got away with it. It's Yuki Sonoda now into the pit lane. Charles Leclerc, interestingly, is on a set of the hards. As Oscar Piastri there didn't lose a place from it, but got a little bit scared. Trying to have a look around the outside of Lando Norris, and I think that tells us everything we need to. We cannot let our cars fight at the moment. We will tell Oscar Piastri not to fight his teammate, but we will get him to use a bit of battery, as he has got quite a lot, and he may as well close back up. There we go, Fernando Alonso has now snuck back up into P4 of this Grand Prix. It's not going to be long uh, before George Russell gets past both of our cars as well. There, as we'll bring Oscar Piastri back down into harvesting mode. But, yeah, the rain, 2 minutes, 40% predictions at the halfway stage here at Albert Park. 
we have got a fantastic opportunity to... This is what we wanted to do, leapfrog a load of these cars. You can still see, even if we boxing one lap too early and lost five seconds or so, we would have a big, big advantage over those cars behind. Here we go then, lap 28. I don't think it's going to be long before George Russell moves past Lando Norris either here. Of course, the two former F2 GP2 rivals, of course, two of the best talents as well. Currently in Formula 1, George Russell will have the DRS, but Lando Norris is not going to make it easy for him, as George Russell going to have to go the long way around, down the outside, in towards the final few corners, but much more superior grip, and George Russell, a much superior car as well, let's not forget, is back up into P6, but we've got a lot of space behind us to his teammate Lewis Hamilton. We've got 10 seconds, and by then, the rain could have arrived. Oh, the tyres are really starting to go off, though, at the moment. This is a big, big gamble in this Grand Prix. See Oscar Piastri down to 38% left on those tyres and the rain still isn't here at the moment. It's gonna be about another five laps it reckons. Please don't say the rain is going away from this Albert Park circuit. This will not do us any favours. Yes, this is what we want to hear. Rain expected as Oscar Piastri now has lost the place to Lewis Hamilton. He's still got about four seconds back to Zhou Guan Yu. So in the end, this bold strategy call might not make much difference for Oscar Piastri there. As definitely he's taken a bit more out of his tyres than Lando Norris has over the course of this Grand Prix. But four minutes and the rain is going to get heavy. We go. The rain has arrived here at Australia. And is it going to be well? I mean, we've got to put Oscar Piastri in. He's got a box now. He's absolutely destroyed that set of tyres. So we're going to put him straight on to a set of the intermediates there. And look how quickly it's starting to fall around this circuit. Like I said, you need at least one mil of water for before the intermediates become the most effective. And then I think it's four uh, for when it's going to get worse. You can still see, though, track is getting heavier and heavier there. It might have been worth bringing in Lando Norris as well, as Oscar Piastri will be the first car into the pit lane then, Copy. onto that set of intermediate tyres there, just as it trickles over the one mil. But, is the rain going to get heavier and heavier here? Let's hope for a good stop. Only light rain is predicted there, but we have got a couple of other cars into the pit lane, so this is a bit of a step into the unknown for a lot of drivers then. It looks like I think Kevin Magnussen is on intermediates as well, though. so Magnussen, Gasly, both have opted to go onto it as well there, but Oscar Piastri, we're going to have to monitor the gap between him and Lando over the course of this lap. Is the gap going to be coming down to those cars at the front of the field? That's got to be the all-important question. It won't take us long before we've got a crawling Yuki Tsunoda just in front of us through the next couple of corners. Oscar Piastri's got to go for it. We've got to tell him about not worrying about his teammate, everything like that. Come on, get around Yuki! We don't want to lose time behind Sonoda here, as you can see, almost three wide as we head down the back straight there. But everyone else is just trying to crawl around the circuit at the moment. Oscar Piastri has been unleashed. Let's get on with it then, Oscar. And let's try and use up these tyres as the rain now. Got to about 1.6 mil. And it's just starting to go the other way. I don't think it's going to get any drier between now and the end. Or I don't think it's going to go dry again. But it is getting a little bit unpredictable here, as what is everyone else doing for tyres? Perez is trying to hang out there at the moment. Sainz has gone on to intermediates. Verstappen has gone on to intermediates. George Russell is still trying to hang out there. As everyone else further back, including Lando Norris, is going to be bolting on a set of the Inters as well. So there are a couple of brave, brave drivers out on this circuit. But Carlos Sainz there already. Sergio Perez, it has not been the wise call from the Red Bull driver there. He's still able to keep Sainz at bay for now. But surely Sainz is just going to get back past him there as Lando Norris comes out ahead of a whole host of other cars that he needs to. That's really important there. But Oscar Piastri has got the jump on him. Kevin Magnussen as well up into P8. So maybe we should have boxed both cars in one lap earlier. But we have still got both cars in the points. That is the priority. So here we go, lap 40. We're getting close to full wets now in this Grand Prix. Oscar Piastri, though, running up in a fantastic sixth place there as George Russell hanging out onto those intermediates far too long. Is it worth going onto full wet tyres or is it just meant to tail back off again? Track grip. Where am I looking? Um, track grip is meant to stay low, but it is meant to go up against something. No, we've got to go full wet. It's going to get wetter and wetter before the end of this Grand Prix. We are going to take the gamble. We're going to bolt on a set of full wet compound tyres here. And box this lap. Oh, this is so scary. This is so nervous at this stage of the day. There is so much at stake at the moment as Oscar Piastri heading through the final couple of corners. It is getting really, really wet here. We're going to leave Lando Norris out there for one more lap. 
I want no, both cars in good. the points, but I don't want to risk throwing it away there as no one else is coming into the pit lane at the moment. The track grip is not meant to get better for quite a while, but I don't want to throw this away. Frosca Piastri, the home Grand Prix, he is delivering up to now. But is he still going to have another advantage? He timed the first stop to perfection. Nicholas Satifi. Nicholas Satifi is the only other car on full wet. Please don't say we're throwing this away. Oscar Piastri, he's going to make a move on Charles Leclerc as we head down the back straight there. This has been a fantastic little call then for Oscar Piastri there. He's going to steer out on the full wet compound tyres. We're going to leave Lando Norris on the Inters for now as it doesn't look like anyone else is making the call. Actually, you know what? Why don't we bring... Is the rain going to get better? Track grip. Um, where are we looking? Track water is meant to go down again. So I think we'll, we'll keep up. We'll keep the drivers on different stretches for now then. But Oscar Piastri, we've got to attempt to push on. He may as well just absolutely destroy this set of tyres and just go for it. Oh, here we go around the outside. Oscar Piastri in towards Del there. That would be an audacious attempt for a move. But Joe Guan Yu has held up Charles Leclerc. And there we go. Oscar Piastri. The McLaren has overtaken the Ferrari here. It doesn't sound so crazy normally. But in F1 Manager, that is quite a big moment here. We have just overtaken the fastest car in Formula 1. Track grip is meant to go up slightly over the next two laps, but Oscar Piastri is not in a bad place here, and we've just got to try and get him around Zhou Guan Yu as well. Oscar Piastri has used all of his ERS though, but he's still going to steamroll around the outside of Zhou Guan Yu there at the end of the back straight. Now he can be unleashed, now he can go for it for a couple laps here. We haven't got much spare fuel, but Piastri back inside the top 10 there as Lando Norris still sitting comfortably in P7. 15 more laps to go here. We are still in the points. Oscar Piastri is still the fastest car on the circuit at the moment, but we are just about to trip back over in towards the intermediate territory here. 3.99, there we go, there's the switch. I'm just going to bring him back down onto standard mode, um, but this is where things are going to get really, really difficult. Do we box Oscar again, or is the track grip going to stay quite low? And fingers crossed we can just hang out here. Oh, 10 to go, and I feel like Oscar Piastri, those heroics might just be coming away from him again. We're going to have to box onto a set of the intermediate tyres there. We're not going to see any more rain, I don't believe. Track grips, yeah, just meant to go up and up towards the end of this one. We could see a bit of a switchover point once again, actually. We could see a switchover inside the next few laps. No, I think we've just got to box him again, and I'm so sorry, Oscar. This is not what I wanted at the moment for you. He's about to get lapped as well by Carlos Sainz, but 12 laps to go here. Charles Leclerc has been lapped by his teammate, but Oscar Piastri, we had to try and hedge our bets. We wanted to get one car in the points, and unfortunately for Oscar, often the strategies have gone his way so far this year, but it is his home race. It might not happen. I hate to see it. I hate it when we accidentally just kind of, not ruin one of our drivers' races, but don't quite give them the race I feel they deserve. Oscar Piastri, 10 laps to go with this Grand Prix. He's now going to have to come out, and we're going to set him just to go full attack mode in these final few laps there. He's going to come out quite a long way back down the order. P14 at the moment does not show just how good of a race this young man has had, but he's just got to get on with it still towards the end, and maybe, just maybe, get closer to that top 10 once again. Oscar Piastri trying to make a move then up the inside of Yuki Tsunoda. That's one ticked off for seven laps to go now this Grand Prix. Lando Norris, we've got to get him to push on as well and try to keep George Russell at bay. We've already had a battle between these two early on, but could we still get Kevin Magnussen before the end if we keep pushing? Oh no, track conditions have changed the wet again. It might have been worth trying to keep Oscar Piastri out there. But now, we have got Lando Norris all over the back of Kevin Magnussen late on in the day. We're going to have to really try and monitor the fuel on this car there. But it is just getting so, so tricky late on in the afternoon. Nobody really knows what's going on here at Albert Park. It is just over into the full wet conditions once more. As we've got one of the Ferraris, that of course Carlos Sainz, closing in on this train of cars as well there but sh come on we've got to try and get around Kevin Magnussen P6 here would be a phenomenal result in the Australian Grand Prix there Oscar Piastri is still trying to close up that gap to those cars up the road there but Esteban Ocon is a long long way clear with just a handful of laps to go we may as well gamble it Oscar Piastri it's already gone a bit badly wrong for him why don't we just bought him onto a fresh set of full wets and he can just push to the flag there he's not going to score points if he doesn't so we may as well just try it as Lando Norris 
Four laps to go. He's trying to look for a move on Kevin Magnussen, but no move is opening itself up for now. That's all I can really think of is maybe, just maybe, if Kevin Magnussen gets held up being lapped by Carlos Sainz, we can try and get in there as well. But you can see Oscar Piastri back now into equal fuel save, and he's back into P14, but hopefully he's going to be mighty fast towards the end of this one. Is Kevin Magnussen. Oh, no, he hasn't been slowed up enough. Three laps to go here in Albert Park, and we've got to try and find a way around the Haskar there. If we can try and put him between us and the Mercedes, that could be a massive helping hand lay on in the day there. Oscar Piastri further back, though. I mean, if he, if he closes up, he closes up. If he doesn't, he doesn't. But what can we do with Lando Norris there as we're about to start? Yeah, the third to last lap here of the Grand Prix. He's still all over the back of Kevin Magnussen, but he just cannot find a way around him at the moment. As we'll put him into push mode. Can he try and get a run down in towards turn three here on the Hass? He's going to try and have a look to the outside. This is high stakes racing here on Albert Park to the outside of Kevin Magnussen there. Go on, Lando Norris. Try to complete the move. He's going to get shot shouldered out there that keeps the nose on the inside of the Haskar. Surely this one is going to go the way of McLaren there. To the outside of Kevin Magnussen we go there. You would not want to be doing this with K-Mag in real life there. But round the outside we'll go and we are now up into P6 of the Australian Grand Prix there. Kevin Magnussen has got no answer for us for now but now we've got to try and pull away from him and also manage the battery and the fuel late on in the day. Oh, this is what we want to see. George Russell, Kevin Magnussen duking it out just behind us. This is Lando's opportunity to run away in towards the final lap of the Australian Grand Prix there. Carlos Sainz has absolutely dominated this one. Of course, Charles Leclerc very, very unlucky to get involved in that accident there with Valtteri Bottas. A massive crash down at th turn three, but somehow both cars still going this afternoon. Alfa Romeo, they look so, so strong early on here. They've had good race pace throughout the entirety of this season so far, but Bottas with that error. Zhou Guan Yu not quite nailing the strategy in the way I'm sure he would have wanted there. Alex Albon just moving out of the way for us as well as Carlos Sainz starts the last lap of this Grand Prix and Lando Norris just behind him there. One lap to go here from Albert Park and we are looking like, unless Lando Norris has done it stupid on this final circuit of the Albert Park, that he is going to get some points on the board for the first time this year for McLaren. The battle that we're really interested in, though, is the battle going on behind them there as George Russell still cannot find a way around Kevin Magnussen, and this has been an absolute lifesaver for ourselves late on in the day. Commiserations to Oscar Piastri in his home Grand Prix. We bolted on that set of full wet tyres. It has not worked out for him. He's still sat in P14 there, struggling his way around the final couple of laps there, and I do feel bad for Oscar Piastri, but, you know, we're a team. We need to be trying to score points there, and I didn't want to gamble with both of our cars, and it, it was just the way racing works sometimes, unfortunately, there for Oscar Piastri. But in towards the final few corners, Carlos Sainz is going to get another win on the board here in Formula 1 and prove to the likes of Verstappen and Charles Leclerc that he is here to fight throughout the entirety of the 2022 season there. Red Bull will still get both cars on the podium. Fernando Alonso, a fantastic afternoon. He is going to walk away with what looks like a well-deserved P4 there. Lewis Hamilton P5, a good recovery after his disaster in qualifying. Once again, the track switches back over to wet, so it is going to favour Oscar Piastri on this final lap. But through the final couple of corners, down towards the line, first points of the year, and it's P6 for Lando Norris. You absolutely love to see it. Commiserations to Oscar Piastri, though, as he heads through the final couple of corners. He spent so much of the afternoon inside the points there, but we, we had to gamble it. And unfortunately, you know, it was one of those ones where Oscar Piastri could have been P6 or Lando Norris could have been right there, but... Oscar Piastri across the line, P14 in his first home Grand Prix. Points are not far away for that young man. Lando Norris can be proud. What a fantastic performance from him. A fantastic result for McLaren there. That's right, the team really deserves to celebrate this success before looking ahead to the next race. After the race, they sit in seventh place in the constructor standings. Now the teams will be looking ahead to Imola, where the season progresses with the Emilia-Romagna Grand Prix. Get ready for some fierce competition.
Well, there we are then, the end of the Australian Grand Prix and Carlos Sainz pole position, fastest lap, race victory, 26 points on the board, the smoothest of operators there. Finishes out ahead of Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez there. Max Verstappen as well. I honestly forgot that he'd started way down the order as well there. Up 11 places by the end. A fantastic job by the Dutchman there. Perez P3 ahead of Alonso like we said. Hamilton up 9 places into P5 there. And Lando Norris on the one stop OP. 57 laps completed and it is going to be 8 well earned points for McLaren there. Love to see that. Kevin Magnussen, seventh ahead of Russell, Gasly and Zhou Guanyu will pick up another point for Alfa Romeo there and yeah, just feel gutted for Oscar Piastri but like I said, points are not far away from that young man. Sebastian Vettel, the only other driver to make the one-stop works but that means championship-wise, Carlos Sainz now into the lead of the championship table. They're ahead of Max Verstappen. Sergio Perez now jumped Charles Leclerc. Hamilton still P5 ahead of Fernando Alonso and Lando Norris up inside the top 10 there with some big, big points on the board. Kevin Magnussen, his first point of the year for Haas as well, so it was critical uh, that we stayed ahead of them. And unfortunately, yeah, Oscar Piastri down into 17th place overall in the championship. Constructors-wise, though, Red Bull lead the way now. Uh, seven points clear ahead of Ferrari. Mercedes still looking comfortable in at P3. But you know what? P4 could still be on the table this year if we continue on the good developments there. Alpine jump Alfa Romeo and Alfa Tauri. We jump Haas and Aston Martin. That finally is a weekend that we can be proud of in this F1 manager career mode. Definitely going to be coming back to this a whole lot more. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure you leave a like. Get yourself subscribed as well. And we will be back very, very soon when F1 manager heads to Imola. You guys do not want to miss that. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.